Hello, uh, today I'm looking at the DoorDash food delivery app. I think it's the most popular app, food delivery app on the Play Store and in the, in the App Store. Uh, I used it in the past, it's super cool, it's very useful. Uh, and uh, I think the possibilities of what you can do with this API are basically endless. I mean, uh, you can build so much on top of it. You can build Slack bots, Telegram bots, you can track appearance of new items. Uh, you can, I don't know, create group orders, you can track your deliveries, you can do so much with it. So I really like this idea. Uh, when I looked into the app, I mean, in the third party department, you see, you know, some of the regular stuff, Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, but also I noticed that they have two fraud detection solutions. They, they use SIFT, which is a fraud detection solution, and they also use Riskify. And uh, I think that's interesting. I know that sometimes big companies, they, they run two different solutions, one against the other, to see which one gets better result. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they just use two solutions in parallel if they're uh, pretty strict on fraud. And I personally know what's my favorite solution. Um, yeah, and I basically created an order and uh, I looked into all the APIs that are being sent by the mobile app. You have everything that you need here. I mean, you can look at each restaurant, you can see all the, all the items, you can see everything that you would, uh, you would expect. And uh, yeah, I noticed, I mean, the structure is, is really reasonable, something that you can work with. Something uh, small that I kind of like, and it, it might be obvious for some, but uh, if you're doing like item pricing, uh, you usually don't want to use like float numbers or something like that, although it's more precise. Uh, I remember I read, for the first time a long time ago in effective Java that you should, if, if the smallest amount of, of money that you're looking into is going to be sent, you can basically store it in cents and it will make so much easier to do all the calculations that you might need. So this is a small trick. It might be pretty well known, but I kind of like it. Uh, yeah, so I loaded this, these APIs into load mills or like analyze them. Everything works super smoothly. I mean, you don't need to do anything basically with them. All the parameters are detected automatically and you can basically, you know, you can just run it. It runs in second. You can create orders, delete orders, do everything that you might uh, expect with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it basically. I mean, you get all the information that you need. You can add stuff to the cart. Uh, you can do everything that you would expect. So it's super simple. Um, yeah, they also have a really well documented public API. It's not exactly the same as the mobile API, but it's pretty similar, pretty easy to work with. They also have a Node.js SDK. Uh, so if you're looking into that, it can be super easy to use. And that's it. We're going to have a, sort of like a LinkedIn live session regarding food and drinks app, because I think there are some aspects to these apps that uh, might be worth looking into. Uh, so uh, that's it. We'll update with the dates and everything. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.